This stream contains fast flashing images that may affect viewers who are susceptible to photosensitive epilepsy or other photosensitivities. Viewer discretion is advised. It's opening weekend for VCT Americas and everybody is here. Clear your schedule because we got ourselves an incredible Sunday doubleheader coming right at you. Of course, I'm Golden Boy. Welcome to VCT Americas right here in Los Angeles, California. I'm joined here at the desk. We got Bala, we got Mimi. We also have Ender yet again for some more carnage and chaos because we're clear gluttons for punishment. Uh, guys, Speak for yourself. Wow. <laughs> well, I'm a glutton for punishment, clearly, because I got to deal with the three of you okay. guys today. Okay, uh, how are you doing after the, you know, you got to, they I'm were coming at you yesterday. I don't really want to be here. I saw a cornhole out there. I want to go play. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, how you I know, know he's a, a boba father truck. now. <laughs> You want to go to com the, the boba, the like, uh, they, they have like a food truck out. Oh, I just want to play some cornhole. Some you noodles. should move to Wisconsin. Just <laughs> play some cornhole. That's all I'm he down. wants to do, guys. All right, folks. So this weekend, we're throwing that block party that we were talking about. Right now, over at the parking lot, we got so many people out there full of attractions, booths, fans, and apparently clout vampires. That's a thing. Let's go ahead, though, and send it over to Smix. See what's going on. Smix here with Troy at the iBuy Power booth, and I know you guys have a pretty cool Aim Lab setup going on, so tell us what it is. Yeah, uh, so basically we partnered with Aim Labs to make a recreation of the iBuy Power Ace from Cowan Zine. So it's his Ace on Split versus Sentinels, and why don't you go ahead and give it a try, actually? All right, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Sure. Okay. So basically, the first guy is gonna peek you here, elbow, and then. Okay, nice. You're gonna work your way around sight, kill the two who swing you here. And then you gotta stop the guys who planted for heaven. Nice, and then you work your way back. Every time you get a kill, you get more time, and essentially you'll just keep racking up points and try and go as long as you can. Okay, gotta get the diffuser, nice. You can have enough time to get this one. Ooh, that was clutch, that was very clutch. Thank you very much, Troy. Make sure to check it out at that by Power, by power booth. <laughs> the, the adrenaline was pumping. She was like, uh, hey, you know what? I, I guess uh, not only is she good at FPS games, but also she's got Faflarin to help her out as well. So, you know, a little Counter Strike Pro. So, you got all that stuff out Dude, there. You I know? knew she had it as soon as she Yeah, as soon as you see the keyboard there, yeah. she's like, it's, it's over. Just, yeah, way to go. Way to go. That's awesome. Good stuff there, Smix. It's a shame about the uh, the flub on the I Buy Power. I'm kidding. I'm okay. She's going to kill me for that. Let's go ahead, though, and talk about perfect. what happened. Dude, why would you, you're so mean. <laughs> Let's talk about what we witnessed here yesterday. I'm not mean. She's my homie. Okay, we kicked off Both stage one with Leviathan versus Cloud9. This one went the distance. Exciting game, but I tell you, did not go the way that people were expecting it well, to Paul go. Well, expected this. I did he not expect Leviathan is bottom 11. Yeah, I, <laughs> that's a little harsh, that's but crazy. I, definitely, I definitely think the hype right now uh, for Leviathan has died down a lot, uh, especially sure. after this game, and I think it was already dying down before, uh, before this event started, right? Not for you guys, but I mean, yesterday obviously we saw the proof uh, in the pudding because, yeah, it just wasn't there. I mean, it was insane from Cloud9, but then we went to the second game, which was a trouncing. NRG looked incredible. That second half of Breeze bring it back with some incredible clutch moments. And then once we got over to Sunset, they looked great. They picked up that Sentinels comp. They were running it really well. It was clear that they'd spent a lot of time practicing. On top of that, Demon One hitting form. He had his little debut on Rays and did incredible there as well. Yeah, you can't forget, like, NRG, they they lost that tough game back in, back in kickoff and they yeah. had so much time to get on the grind. Like, this is a team that even back then, they didn't get to represent us on the international stage but we knew they were going to be good and having that showing versus loud yeah. is just an instant like ring of success you can have faith in this team yeah i, I think yeah. it's kind of a difference between the two both were like a vibe check of the two teams that people were calling super teams of who's really going to be up there and i think energy knocked it out of the park but yep. there's still kind of more to see from leviathan if they can hit that mark for that sure. people expected at the beginning of the season yeah yeah for sure i mean we'll definitely be keeping eyes on that uh but you know in regards to that leviathan cloud nine game though it, we had yesterday c9 you know they went into overtime it may have broken vanity but this was uh one of the tweets he put out success isn't only measured by your life's <laughs> accomplishments it's also measured by the number of people what you inspire beautiful be that light you'll give others the confidence to do the same there's work to be done in your community. Go be the change you want to see in the world. Now, that juxtaposed with what he said after the fact. <laughs> Is this an uh, attempt at censorship? Are you going to read this? Uh, no, I don't think I will. That's uh, but I will read Valorant is back, baby! <laughs>
Is that you? <laughs> yes, that is my face. That's a lot of Men you. over so. peak. Men lose every fight. Men <laughs> <laughs> knife the diffuser. Yeah. For real. Valorant's That's it. back, baby. True things that were said by Vanity. Great. I, I, Vanity, I told you I was going to get it on the show, and I did just I feel that. bad for him, because every time he plays well, they lose. Every time <laughs> he plays bad, they win. <laughs> Well, now he knows what they got to do. So that's it. <laughs> He's got Give one job, baby. Keep it going, baby. Make, make sure you trash when Buy you get out there. Dead, you know, too. You'll get it this time. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, that go ahead and brings us to what's coming up today. Maybe some more shenanigans. Maybe some more craziness. We got G2 versus EG. And then afterwards, it's going to be a social media manager's dream. It's Sentinels going up against 100 Thieves in another clout match. We love the clout matches for sure. But I'm excited, though, for these two games. They're going to be yeah. excellent matches. It's rematch central, right? And the, right. the previous matches were so close between these two teams, even though you wouldn't necessarily have expected it. Uh, so we're definitely in store for some great Valorant today. Yeah, it's going to be excellent. I'm pumped. We're all excited here. But what's also awesome is that this is going to be the first time that we are going to get to see Sentinels since their trophy lift. And we had a chance to speak with the team as well as some of the other America's pros about that hard fought win. Check it out. We're coming back to LA from Madrid, where we just came back from winning uh, Masters Madrid. This is my first time winning uh, with a crowd presence, and so being able to lift that trophy, seeing all the crowd like clapping, it's definitely something that I will look back on and remember for the rest of my life. But how much can one man do? First one found, second one not there. It's over. Sense City here to play, here to stay, and history has been made. I would say the win is a, a really good sign for the region. It gives me a lot of like faith that the Americas region is still extremely competitive uh, on the international scale. And um, even at home, like all the matches here are so close. So I think that a lot of the Americas teams can really compete at a high level. A gente não ter vencido o Masters foi muito bom pra gente, né? Que mostra o poder da América. E a gente tava torcendo pra eles, com certeza. Principalmente pro Saci, né? Que é brasileiro, né? Como a gente. Então, a torcida tava toda pra eles. Honestly, a super good luck as a whole, like John QT moving up and just winning the first international event of the year just goes to show like how deep the town pool is over here. Oh, and, and on top, like our worst team could be, you know, EU's best team sometimes. Bueno, el hecho de que Sentinels haya ganado la, la, la Masters obviamente lo hace como, como difícil para todos los equipos de América porque prácticamente están asegurados en Champions. Es muy difícil que no clasifiquen y vamos a ser la única región básicamente donde vamos a estar peleando por tres cupos en vez de cuatro. I was rooting against them just for the sake of champion points. Like, we don't, I don't want them to get ahead of us. But outside of that, I mean, I'm happy for them. I know what it feels like to win a tournament, so it's definitely the greatest feeling and the feeling everyone's been working for. I would say it makes us even more motivated than before, just knowing what the feeling of winning is like and wanting to chase it again. Uh, at the same time, like having the knowledge that because we won, teams are going to want to beat us and uh, using that to motivate us too. Definitely a target on our back. I felt this experience before after winning Reykjavik. It's kind of the same deal, but I think this time we're going to be more prepared. It's time to get back into the America's VCT League and get started. America's on top, thanks to Sentinels in Madrid after an incredible run. And yeah, I mean, you know, you heard it in the piece. I think a lot of people do feel like this America's region, super competitive. And for good reason. I mean, everybody is bringing it in this league here. And, the like, the parity between the teams, it's so small. Yeah, I, I think I felt this immediately as we started to kick off. Like, yeah. within the first two matches, I feel like this is the best quality we put out for every single team in terms of depth here in America's League. It is yeah. very high level and very competitive this year. I think this is also a massive motivator in both ways for the other teams in America's to really hunt down Sentinels, to be able to figure out how they play, to beat the best, but also, like Zekin was saying, when you're the best, staying up there is even harder, and right. that's a massive motivator for the boys on Sen as well. Yeah, something that stuck out to me in that piece as well, King saying that, you know, with Sentinels winning kickoff and winning Madrid and Having that points advantage, which we talked about yesterday, it will be very difficult for this team not to qualify for champs. So it's like he said, we're a region fighting for three spots rather than four. That's going to make things very competitive, and it's going to set the stage quite nicely for this next matchup here. Two teams that are going to be vying for that opportunity. One of them, a world champion. The other one, brand new to the league. You got yourself the 2023 champions and evil geniuses going up against G2 Esports. Now, 
Ender, this is going to be a fascinating matchup because these two teams have already played each other before, but this time around, things a little bit different. Yeah, and let's not forget, G2 also winners in their own regard. That's right. Winning challengers here to make it onto this stage. And when these two teams played the first time around, it was close. It was a 2-0, but both maps went the distance. OT on the first one, Icebox was a 13-11, where Jogamo busted out that deadlock. That was so crazy to see. <laughs> but G2 really gave EG a run for their money. I think it also set the tone for what to expect from both these teams. For, for EG, it felt like a continuation of previous, where they're really trying to set their own style to cook things up. It was really reminiscent uh, for me of the early season of EG last year, where yeah. they're pulling out all these interesting ideas, but it hasn't fully clicked yet in the fundamentals. So that makes me really excited to watch this team yeah. now in the main stage. I think the expectation for them is to continue to punch way up, right? Yeah. Like they have expectations with the roster that they put on paper, and everybody's like, hey, this isn't going to work. It's not going to happen again. But I, I think Dude, we already if it's saw the it same kickoff. story. It'll be nuts. <laughs> and and, and, and going granted, crazy. like it has to go over uh, now two splits, right? Sure. It's, not, it's an even longer season than last year. And but that could be a good thing in a way, right? Having all that time to really flesh things out. Because yeah. this is one of the most of our teams here have had one, two changes, have had a little shift. EG is really our only roster that is. Well, there, there's a few others, but it's really the only roster with, like, no core. We're building it from scratch. But G2, on the other hand, this is a team that has been the same for so long and is now, after only playing a few matches, making a big change. That's right. As you can see right there, we see Net being uh, left from the team, and you got Icy is going to be taking his spot. And it's certainly, you know, this is a team that has been known to be, you know, the band of brothers, right? They've been together for such a long time, incorporating Leaf this season, but it, the core of this team had been together for, for a minute now. So it really is kind of uh, Ender, I guess, a little bit shocking to see this change coming in right as the season starts. 100%, especially after they played a week's worth of games, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> this is this is a completely new team now after the, the team that won champs or won uh, challengers last year, right? With Leaf and with Icy now coming into the roster. And it, it's it's very interesting to, to me to see that change made because I, I didn't feel at least that it was any kind of individual issue uh, with this G2 team. I think that they played a fairly predictable style. They're playing heavy, heavy retakes every single round. And I think that's something that a team like EG was definitely taking advantage of. So the fact that they're just like plug and play and this is going to be the solution, I don't personally see it. The thing is, I don't think they're expecting it to be plug and play. To me, it almost feels like it, it seems to me from the outside that the players and the coaching staff might have thought that the team needed a hard reset, that what was happening, what was consistently going on, what they had been building towards wasn't working and they needed a big change to be competitive. Because this isn't something you're really going to do lightly, right? Yeah. Taking apart a roster that's been together for so long. We did hear rumors in the past about maybe Net be not being with the team way back when, even before that Ascension yeah. run. So I'm not super out of, surprised out of all the to people see they might have replaced through. coming into G2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, especially since his performance wasn't great in the first week. But yeah. I really doubt that first week performance is the reason this change happened. I imagine it was like a long time coming with them feeling like they needed a reset. Yeah, yeah I, I was honestly thinking one of the things that it could be about is a different read on the meta as well because Net obviously in the in the Sentinel role for them, Icy was playing a bunch of smoke so if they wanted to take yeah. uh, a position that is a little bit like allowed for example and playing no senti comps, that could be a major motivator uh, in terms of a meta read in terms of a player swap. Yeah, for sure. I mean we'll see of course, uh, you know, matchups should be coming in a little bit here but for more on G2's roster shakeup, let's go ahead and send it over to Smix the pro aimer who's standing by with Valen. Good morning, Valen. Uh, great to see you. And uh, I know historically you've always usually played with the same group of boys and always talked about this ethos of playing with your band of brothers. But obviously, recently there was a roster change. Could you share with us a little bit as to the reasons as to why? Um, well, do you want the PR answer or the real answer? I think we want the real answer. Okay, the real answer is buy the G2 bundle. But... <laughs> Actually, I mean, there's no bad blood within the team. Like, we've always enjoyed playing with each other, even towards the end. Um, but some things just don't really go your way, and that's kind of esports, and that's being a part of a competitive team, right? Um, in practice, boot camps, like, we didn't see the results that we wanted, and we felt that we needed a change as a team. And whether it's the right or wrong one, time will tell. But uh, we still love Mike, and I hope he's still cheering for us. But we'll get this one for you, bro. Thank you for the real answer. Good luck today. Well, of course, Valen, uh, you know, just being upfront about things, you, I, I think like it, 
had to be difficult for him, uh, you know, being the leader of this team, playing with these guys for so long. That's never easy, you yeah, know, having absolutely. to say goodbye to someone you've you rolled with for so long. I mean, all the way back at Reykjavik, like it's been years and years and it has been the same core. Yeah, and I think people have been respecting that a lot, actually, getting a lot of flowers throughout the pro community, too. But I, I, to me, I look at this and I see I see, I see him playing on the EG Reserve roster last year. I compared to Demon 1 coming in after a few matches. I don't know, man. It's some... I, the thing is, I feel like <laughs> that's you looking at the most optimistic of course. possible thing, right? No, not everyone can be a team in one. Not there's a lot of talent up here, but not every tier two player is gonna rock up to tier one and, oh, that and blow attitude, the doors I off. <laughs> It just can't happen. Maybe Icy will be great. Maybe he won't be. But I don't think we can expect that the reason this roster change was made was because he's going to be suddenly, like, the next best player in the world out of nowhere. He could be. But yeah. it, 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 I think it has to be more around the team needing a change, something new like that, more to what uh, Valen was saying in that interview. Sure. Could, could this team – I mean, we've seen what this squad can do at Ascension and, you know, how they've achieved great heights – do you feel like this, with this change, like, is it motivating to at least be like, okay, maybe they're they're thinking forward here. They're not just trying to, like, stay with the past, what worked before. They're trying to, like, move forward with this. Do we feel confident about this with Icy coming into the lineup? Well, the thing for me with Icy is I I haven't watched a game of his for, like, a year. Yeah, almost. yeah. Like, because playing with EG Reserve, he, he didn't play EG a Reserve, single official, secret, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, the, the hidden team, we heard yeah. they were doing well in scrims. We heard they were dominating and the championship. And then they played one team. event yeah. and, like, got O2'd or something. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> and that was yeah. after... They got dropped by EG. Yeah, yeah. Well, folks, uh, let's uh, actually learn a little bit more about Icy, but this time we're going to learn from his former teammate. We have Evil Genius's Apoff standing by with Smix. Good morning, Apoff. Uh, obviously, I know that you have a great game ahead of you today, and I'm specifically curious about Icy as he was a teammate of yours last year. What did you think of him as a player, and what do you think it is that he brings to G2? Um, I don't really want to comment on what I, what I think about him as a player, but... Please buy the EG Bundle, and today we're playing for net. Sounds good. Buy the EG Bundle. Okay, I like no. it. People putting no. themselves sorry, out there. Sorry, sorry. The, the bundles are the worst thing to happen to player interviews <laughs> in the history of esports. Like, can you give us any? We, we haven't seen this guy play in a year. Can you give us any thoughts? No, buy the bundle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great, thank you, thank you. Really appreciate that. For, we for learned context, a lot. The reason we asked him that question is because Apoc played for, with this yeah, guy for he over was on a year the secret on EG Reserve, <laughs> on the secret roster. He's one of like five people outside of other teams who scrim them who knows about him. But no, <laughs> no buy the bundle. No. Yeah, thanks. No. To be fair, I mean, he's his enemy now. Like, I'm fine. I'm, Kind of it's fun fine. <laughs> He'll say what he needs to say in the server, right? Maybe that's how that plays out. All right, folks. Well, no one knew what to expect from the 2024 Evil Geniuses roster. But here's the thing. They managed to – I think when they came out, a lot of people were really down on this team for good reason. You know, World Championship squad gets blown up. Roster is not together anymore. And then they come out and they start trying some new ideas. They, they're, they're, as we mentioned, the EG of old. And it's been really fun to see them cook in that regard. But I'm curious to see how much more they've developed at this time. Yeah, I mean, this is a team that came out with the deadlock on Icebox, then going into that series against Loud on Ascent, and they dro they drop in the Cypher, right? And all of a sudden, Loud have no way to actually exec into sites. Uh, I thought their reads um, in how to counter that out was very, very strong. Even though it didn't net them the series win, they took down what was looking like like one of Loud's best maps. To me, to kind of expand on my previous point of why this is reminiscent of EG at the beginning of last year, mm. it's because they have really good macro ideas. They had a great counter strat against Loud. Their Icebox deadlock comp, it's weird, but you can see the idea there, juggling around utility. Yeah. It's clear that they're cooking. There's a reason they're making the decisions they are, but the fundamentals, the synergy between the players, those things still need work to be on level with top teams like Loud, to be yeah. able to do more than just take that map. I, I would caution to not conflate maybe last year and uh, what, what you're seeing in terms of the creativity about the meta and counter stratting versus what actually we saw in 2022 with EG, which was sure. a lot of counter strat wins. I mean, we did start with the same stuff at the beginning then, and it didn't end with the world championship. Right, exactly. And I think a lot of the time, like a lot of heavy prep can take a team that maybe is a lot lower of a level than other teams and beat out some of the, uh, the overdogs in a sense, but not actually allow them to have consistency to sure. beat them in the long run when, when Loud is stopping to do gimmicky stuff, when they stop going for like sure. Phoenix and stuff on. on and that's what happened the last two maps out series. <laughs> no, we disagree, <laughs> apparently. That um, yeah, you guys disagree. <laughs> apparently, well, I don't know. So someone, <laughs> someone that's somewhere that's disagrees. Right. Are you in the room? We, we, have, we, have, no, we have no choice in the matter. <laughs> uh, what I'll say, and hopefully I don't get the, the buzzer, is that I love... <laughs> All right, we can move on. 
<laughs> well, you know what? Actually, we're going to keep the conversation going with EG. Let's talk about that boy, Jock. Ah, I like that. There you <laughs> go. Like you. <laughs> Let's talk about that boy, Jock. Jogamo, of course, one of the best duelists uh, in the game, and he's always been that type of player that has no problem taking those risks, trying no. new things, like playing Deadlock, for example. It was pretty awesome. Well, look, his raise movement is best in the world, and his Deadlock, well, you don't need the movement, but it also looks pretty I good. I think we can say he's the best Deadlock player in the world. Uh, actually. Fact. Wait, can we get a buzzer or a ding? Sure. I don't know. Is <laughs> whether the best Waiting? player in the world. Loading? There we go. We'll take no, it. But this is this is the thing that I think is so unique to evil geniuses and the way that Potter sort of builds the comps that this team plays because she'll take star players and she won't build comps around yeah, them. It's yeah. not, oh, Jogamo's raise is insane. He's playing raise every map. It's not Demon 1's jet's insane. He's playing jet every map. Yeah. It is Potter having a read on how she wants to play a map and then putting her players in the right place. And you have to have an incredibly flexible and willing roster in order to be able to do that. For a Demon 1 to play a Brimstone, for a Jogmo to play a Deadlock, but it works. And that is what I think gives every EG roster sort of that longevity yeah. is the fact that they can play all these different styles and it's not just a raise for a jet. It's completely yeah. different styles of agents and they can switch on a dime just like that. I think what's important though is that it is Jogmo, right? This guy is turned into a superstar back from when he was in 2022. He was still a very good player. He was a yeah. star. Now he's a superstar and you're allowed to build comps around him regardless of what he's going to play and yeah. he's going to fry in the server because his confidence has boosted way up in the... For the it. record, he was a superstar in 2022. He was just like, he was LeBron on like a 10th grade... <laughs> <laughs> that was, that, what do you mean? That was still the most attention think, any athlete has ever gotten. <laughs> I, don't yeah, ever I don't know enough oh. about basketball. <laughs> also, uh, he wasn't. You made a I know he's no MJ. <laughs> you made a basketball <laughs> reference. And honestly, I'm quite proud of you, Mimi. That Thanks. was pretty awesome. All right, folks. Once again, let's go ahead and send it over to Smix, who's outside at the block party, chilling over at the EG booth. What you got for us, Smix? We're here at the Fan Fest at the EG booth with our lovely Just say, hey, I just want to go outside and do some stuff and grab no. the camera. What a G. She's an aimer. What is that? She's an aimer. In server, <laughs> out of server, a sharpshooter. Don't matter, it don't matter the game. It's you funny know? because I saw in the hallway, like, after the, those things, she was like, I had so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen the sun today. <laughs> and now we know why she had so much fun. And you should go outside. Uh, all right, well, let's go ahead, though, and take a look. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Everyone should go outside and get, get, get some vitamins. Uh, in any case, so folks, let's take a look at our class of 2024 rookies because the poll, or excuse me, the pool is even bigger thanks to some roster moves over in stage one because uh, now we add in Moose, now we add in Icy. Uh, but overall, I mean, got to say, one hell of a class of, of 2024 for these rookies. Yeah, the rookies have been going insane from Oxy getting that win John yesterday. John won a championship. EU having a great <laughs> debut to 100 Thieves. And, of course, John QT, first international, Wild. winning the whole damn thing. Wild. Hens did that too, though, so to be honest. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so true. Oh. So true. No, oh. dang. No. I like it. No, oh. I like it. Well, you know, guys, listen. <clears throat> <laughs> no, you, you can't be the soundboard guy, okay? You can't have all that power. That's One dangerous. One day I will be. <laughs> One, One day, day I'll own this I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, here's the thing, all right? Uh, we're going to have to make this graphic fit a few more faces because I don't know if you guys know this. There's a fresh crop of what? talent. That's right. That Even is on more. the way and could very well change the game forever. Check this out. With stage one just getting underway, teams across the league are making big moves to show up their roster so they can make the cut for Master Shanghai and Champion Seoul. Here are some of the latest developments.
Cloud9 has signed BRB, a rookie from Tier 2's Snack Attack. This duelist is always eating on the comms and puts out good vibes in the server. BRB can frag out like no one's business. That is, of course, until they go AFK after some questionable takeout. I've never seen somebody eat all entire plate of wings during a game, but he did it. MIBR recently picked up her support from the Tier 3 squad, Sad Boys. This E-Dater Flex exclusively plays healers. And don't let the name fool you, he is very single. You can always count on her support to be at your side during a fight and in a Discord call every night at bedtime. That's weird. Potter is ready to make waves with another exciting rookie. It's just a little guy. The EG coach scouted this hot prospect right when they signed up with their account. That means little guy is technically in tier zero. But when that account hits level 20, they can hop right into rank. So watch out, everyone. Leviathan is bringing up a mysterious player that goes by the name Man Bay. We don't have any officials on record, but the streets are talking. And they say he's a beast on Rays and will smooth into any fight. And I know what you're thinking. He definitely looks a lot like King. We were talking about strats and his mustache fell off and he acted like it was no big deal. This dude's entire salary goes to DoorDash. a very eclectic group of characters that have been picked up across a variety of different teams. Got to say, though, I mean, you know, just seeing so much new talent now, Mimi. It's incredible. <laughs> a little guy, he really just impressive. Honestly, I think Man Bay's next up for real. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> if he awesome. can keep that mustache on. <laughs> mustache I don't on. know. Yeah. They're winning it all. <laughs> yeah, it, really, so long as the facial hair stays on, you'll be okay, buddy. I believe in you. All right, guys, well, you ready to go ahead and see where we're going for our maps? Yeah, might as well. Might as well. Let's move on so with the show. Our coaches are ready for map select, so let's go ahead and listen in. Alrighty, welcome to day two. As you know, teams were decided via coin flip. G2 will be team A, EG will be team B. G2, you will have first map ban. We'll ban Sunset. G2 ban Sunset. What would you like to ban? We'll ban Bind, please. EG bans Bind. And you have first map pick. We'll pick Lotus. G2 picks Lotus. And what side would you like? I will pick Attack, please. EG picks Attack. And you have map pick. Icebox. EG picks Icebox. And what side would you like? Defense. G2 picks Defense. And you have one map ban. Ban Ascent. G2 bans Ascent. And what would you like to ban? Uh, we'll ban split, please. EG ban split. The cider map will be Breeze. And what side would you like? Defense. G2 selects defense. All right, best of luck today. We got Lotus, Icebox, and if necessary, Breeze on the docket. What do we feel about this series? How, 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 do, you, how, how do you feel? How oh, well, you number one, I'm very happy that um, G2 is not allowing Sunset in the pool. That's we wonderful. Saw, like, they had an addiction at the beginning of this year. <laughs> <laughs> Every single series it was there. I mean, it's ridiculous. Um, and then the other thing I noticed is Pollard taking a little pause there, a little, and then she confidently says Icebox. I'm wondering if we're seeing the deadlock. I think there's more cooked there than... You think there's yeah. it might change things? Yeah. See, I was I think thinking so. G2 might change things because they were playing the Brimstone uh, on Icebox yeah. back in the kickoff, uh, which, I mean, it, it's like some ideas back that Mech were playing back in the day. It's got sweet retake. You can create some one oh, ways and stuff, but... Mech. No, I didn't... <laughs> you I, love Mech. <laughs> Loves I do, I do, but I did not like that icebox comment. No, <laughs> that's fair. Icebox. That that's fair. Uh, well, what about you? How do you feel? Yeah, I, I think icebox is a really interesting one for me because I think that's the map we're seeing in the pool with like the most comp variety right now. And I think it's a good chance to see both these teams' unique look. Is G2 going to continue with the Rimstone stuff? Are they going to go to something more standard? And what what is EG cooking? They, they always have a surprise when you give them prep time. Yeah. Really, what I want to see from G2 is, is more strategic diversity. I think especially on their defensive side, regardless of comp, 
hump. They were so happy, just play like heavy numbers retakes, you know, like back. In the <laughs> what are you talking about? Did you watch the games, person that's pressing the the thing? If you've been pressing a thing, I love it. I love it. Ender's just getting our analysts are getting harassed by sound effects. This is Start incredible. All right, folks. Well, we are out of time, so let's go ahead and get this Sunday started because we got some great matches. It's G2 versus Evil Geniuses, Sentinels versus Hunter. Thieves. Day two of VCT America starts right now. Pull up. This setup has been cooking for a long time. There's so many people there. They'll be away with the second. How on earth has Leaf done that? They know where Ned is. He's dropped him. Another clock oh! from Superman, he does it again! G2 is a interesting one. I haven't played against their new roster. I know they're bringing in Icy. He's the one person that I've seen drop a 40 bomb in a scrim, so that's pretty intimidating, but it's his first time playing on stage, so I think we'll use that against him. So the first match against EG, uh, this is actually my old team. I was on the reserve team. This is a little bit of a revenge match for me. Yeah, I think their main strength is the individual firepower. I think any given player could make a hero play or win them around. He's good for those three. It's clean. They're strong, but I do think we can beat them. I definitely think their strength is like their IGL. Like he's definitely like making sure all their players are in check. Yeah, okay. 30 seconds Holy left. God. Jump spot as well, good discipline. Klaus is off to the side here. No way, guy, no way! Four for him! Biggest threats on EG, I'd have to go Jogamo. Um, he is very versatile as a player because he can play any agent, it seems like. Like, you know, he's on deadlock one day, and the other day he's playing Raze and Jet, and he looks like a superstar on all of them. So, shout out Jaw, he's definitely like the go to that team. Right, Games Arena, it is time to get this Sunday started. Please welcome on stage our first team. It is G2. Can't be called a newcomer. We've been up for several summers, seeking how to step in commas. If you with us, buy the bundle. Say you should buy the bundle. Barely time to buy the bundle. For this ton of errors, rumble. Cause you know we titans in this game. Ain't no contest. If we take it to the game, turn a wild west. We ain't faking what I claim. It's a wild threat. No rope, we've been a vet. Now check the mindset by the name of E2. Try to take over the world, how we come through. Yeah, we G2. Try to take over the world, how we come through. You just follow in the herd, we don't have to. Best forget about what you heard, probably ain't true. This ain't go to, cause you know it's G2. Can't be called a newcomer. We've been up for several summers, seeking how to step in commas. If you with us, bottom. And let's give a warm welcome to G2's opponents. It is Evil Genius A! Geniuses have met before at the America's kickoff, and it was an EG 2-0. Does G2 have what it takes to be able to topple their foe, or can EG just have history repeat again? Look, it was a 2-0, but these games were close. We saw yep. multiple OTs on the first map, the second one a 13-11 on Icebox. But now we are headed into a series and a first map that neither of these rosters have played this year. It is two brand new looks for these two teams. I I'm looking to see exactly how much time and how much they've actually been able to implement both sides, right? One with a new player on the team and then one EG, which you heard the crowd cheer for Potter wouldn't be one of the only teams that has the coach more cheers than anything else, but this team cooks, and how much better are they gonna have get gotten? Because 
back what you said, Ender. These teams were so even before. And for G2, I'm wondering, what's the big change? What's the reason behind bringing Icy into this roster? Yep. What can the guy bring? He's been on a roster under EG where he was playing no officials. He's played so few matches in the last year, but he's been scrimming a hell of a lot. And there's a reason that teams have been impressed by the guy. This is his chance to showcase it. I feel like seeing uh, Icy versus Apoth is so cool if you know the backstory of them both being on the roster together, but also two players with a bit of excitement behind them. I don't know. I, I, I've been following Apoth for a few years now and yeah. just love to see what he does. Yeah, the guy was in sick the like, on 2022 yes, EG. Literally, literally. But then, you know, it, it had been a while. He's back here on the stage next to Icy, or I guess across the stage from Icy. And but, that's also uh, going to play a, a role in this as well. Let's not forget. I mean, this is Icy's first time playing on a VCT stage, so it's kind of a big deal. But he's played against EG so many times. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is the team all year he was scrimming. That's the reason the yeah. EG reserve roster existed, <laughs> to help EG. We got first. some info, too, from Derek a moment ago. He said, this is the only guy I've played against that dropped the 40 bomb. And back then, Derek would have been playing on 100 Thieves. So, like, there's there's some info here. I think I see somebody who's really, really hyped up behind the scenes. And let's yeah. see if there's a reason for it or if it's all just talk. You get a little spoiler there, but Leaf is going to be switching over to the Sentinel role now, previously Ooh. from the Duelist. He's always been a flexible guy. He yeah. can play anything. But I'm questioning how the rest of these G2 guys are going to fill in. Who's swapping over to that du Duelist role? That's the answer we're going to get in a second. Yeah, we'll be getting this agent selected in a moment here as the team set up and get ready so everything can be squared away for this matchup. EG, G2, of course, as we mentioned, familiar with one another in more ways than one. But Ender, there's certainly going to be some something fascinating here as we get ready for this agent select. Yeah, you're going to have reads, but also you know that there's flexibility with everyone. I think talking about Leaf switching things up is is maybe a little surprising, but also Leaf is a guy that back on C9, he was playing Viper, he was playing Sky, he was playing all that stuff on top of the Duelist. And Icy's playing the Duelist. Yeah. Put some pressure on the guy right away. I so mean. that's literally the reason to make a roster change yep. right there. Like if Icy's yep. just playing duelists on even just a handful of maps, like yeah, and then you can take that pressure off of Leaf and have yeah. him, you know, maybe even be the backup for like, you know, the, the LMS situations and stuff like that. Like there's a lot that they could do with this. And you talk to Leaf, he's he's like a guy who loves the flexibility. He loves getting to switch yep. around roles. He he doesn't like play a ton of rank, but he watches so oh, yeah. much Valorant. He's really a second voice in this team. And, and I wonder as well how this actually unlocks Trent to play a lot more initiator constantly, right? Because this is a guy who a lot of times was flexing to that Viper. A lot of times he was flexing to not play the initiator role for the team. So I'm very curious how, how that's going to go as well. It feels sort of like in this meta, Trent is almost locked into that place of a, a second smoke agent on yep. a lot of maps because that just is the is the go-to and especially on a map uh, like uh, Lotus. But it is going to be the fade for him. So I feel like scout initiator, whether it's the fade yep. or the Sova, that has always been Trent's bread and butter. And it looks like both teams just going to lock in that like standard Fnatic comp. A lot of the NA teams switch over to the sky here, but the fade has yep. always been solid. This is a map for me where we're not going to see a ton of the counter strat, the prep. Neither of them have played in the official before. It's a lot oh. more about how are the fundamentals locking in. I, I think that's for sure. Obviously, there's no footage out there of sure. both teams on this map, but the cypher here is something that we're seeing. I think EG go for a lot now. Yeah. You saw it way back on the ascent as well. This is not a common pick, but it's one that is viable on this map for sure. And it's very common for Apop. He's great on this role. All right, folks. Well, this is it. We're ready for our first match of Sunday. Riot Games Arena, why don't you go ahead and make a little bit of noise as we send it to your casters in another live that were once called the Legion of Doom. But today, they're just yeah, Vansili and Riv. <laughs> I still think that just Vansili and Riv is still pretty cool, though, don't you think? But I'm really, really stoked for this game today, Riv, because we have a debut of Icy now on the VCT stage, and at the same time, taking the Duelist role, well, you have some changes from Leaf going to the Sentinels. We'll see today now if those changes will be the missing pieces for G2 to get the revenge against Evil Geniuses when he lost to them in uh, at, at, at Lockin. Yeah, absolutely. It's been, it's there been a while. There you go. It's been a while <laughs> since both teams have gotten their hands dirty in the server. And now we're back for VCT Stage 1, so we'll see what they've been prepping, what they've been playing. Lotus and rarely on both of these uh, teams chart for the, the past few months and even before the year. Yeah. But obviously have been scrimming it. Let's see what we got as we hop into game now. We got that Viper wall up towards A as expected. They can continuously play pressure off that. But let's see how G2 is going to receive this. Four leaning towards that A side, ready for baby door explosion. If they get knowledge of rubble, but it's going to be a quick B entry. Not too easily done, though. A quick stop indeed. 
So now this pressures EG to work towards this A site. Door is going to get open to revolving on the A site. Big paranoia out on the defense. And really, G2 is currently shutting down any push coming out from the Evil Geniuses, leaving out Superman alone. But he's not going to be able to go in the clutch against four players alive of G2 after winning their pistol. It looked like all the focus was going to be ready for A, but still having two towards that breakable door, they turn around, they absolutely decimate who's trying to come into B once that wall goes up from the defensive side. See that getting placed again, and there's the wall. They actually didn't get tagged by it too much, just APOT there. But that timing, the timing is what it was all about for G2 to be able to collapse on what EG wanted to do. So EG looked to kind of spread the map a bit. Distraction at B with a slight lurk that would have been towards A on that round. Completely snuffed out by G2. A great start too though. First pressure that Icy gets already gets a kill and an assist on that. Shutting down the B side attempt from EG. Forcing him now on a full eco. Two shares to work with and controlling orbs at least on one end. There's a yep. deep alarm bot out for mound here. Been seeing it a little G2 bit more. react to it. Yeah, they just they just listen to the noise and trying to figure out if EG is going to try to pivot somewhere else. Letting him walk into the util. No omen smoke here to stop them for now. They got the, the Viper orb. Easy control there. Then the omen smoke will follow just to delay a little bit more on that timing as the smoke will go down. So G2 is playing this one patiently. They already have a good push onto Rubble and Icy. Two big frags to start off this one. Yeah, interesting enough how that was being played here for EG. They were watching their backs, afraid of some sort of push in front of B. So once again, very similar storyline to the pistol. Losing the players on the initial push, they're forced to work in the opposite direction where the numbers are left. Already damaged inside the site. At least a plant will be nice. 30 seconds in the checkbox for EG in this eco. Gotta be deep. <laughs> they're looking to hide in this one. Trent starts it off. Yeah, too much util right now for EG to really Here. get set up in a pulse plan to get anything done. At least they have a Bulldog. An upgrade for Superman. He's currently playing towards the water. So first contact will be Derek. Enemy Both enemy. of them once again working together in the clutch and instantly denied by G2. A great start. A strong on a pistol. A great conversion on the second one for G2. And it looks like a pretty strong bonus round going into the third. And Icy's ready to get going. It's just a Sheriff on the first round for Icy with the nade, the signature for a raise. Second round, buys up on the Bulldog, gets a few frags at Rubble, charging up the Showstopper already. And G2 played this one calm. A good plant, however, by the side of EG. They're gonna be able to use a bit of that money coming in the next round to make sure everything is ready to go to see if they can pull back on the bonus. We'll get a quick tech pause as we... <laughs> we feel it, we feel it. Yeah. See, 301 right there on the board, Valen 3-0. Uh, really calling the A strats off the start for G2. Patiently being able to hold. We saw the Viper Orb into Valen delaying with the smoke as well. So they have the ideas to slow EG down. Yeah. Will Jogamo start being Jogamo and blast past all of this? It's it's one of the, the tried and true things you can always expect to see. If VG's getting forced to play slow, they'll start to play faster on their own terms. And as you can see right now, it looks like it's a small in-ear issue with the rookie right now on the stage, mm. Icy. So that'll get resolved very soon. We're about a minute wait. And as I say that, already 50 seconds, because that took me 10 seconds, right? So it's not going to be that long. But we'll be able to get in now and finally figure out what EG will try to do in the gun round. But at least when we start things off right now for G2, I find that the map pool is going to be quite decent with them to start things off on Lotus, a three map site, a great way to default a little bit yeah. more, and really allow players like Icy to dip his toes in the server and get comfortable here on the big stage. Well, same thing for Leaf, right? It's a whole big um, role change going into a Sentinel. Mm -hmm. Although it doesn't really feel as of yet that they're really being challenged yet. So that's a, a great way to kick things off. And I like that point about G2 getting this, the rounds, the map, the momentum here on Lotus, because you don't know what EG is going to do on Icebox. It's going to be maybe jogging on Deadlock again. Maybe they change it as they showed you that and want to pull away from it because they have something else. It's yeah, Lotus will be a nice boon for G2 to be able to put under their belt and start this series off. Starting off, good frags, like I said, for Icy Valen. Three away from the Showstopper there. There's a focus towards C, but more of a default across the map. As this A push is constant orb farming just for Icy to get him online. Exactly. Formed a lot of kills in the first two rounds, getting really close to the Showstopper. You saw at the beginning of the round two, Apoth was looking for a lineup. 
to at least place a cage or a camera, get a little bit of pressure towards the B sign. So EG once again, trying to hold a default, working different extremities around the map, breaking utility on the C side first, turret down. And it really doesn't force G2 to swing out yet. They maybe want to use the alarm bot as their first wave to use util. But it's EG that puts the first step. Yeah. Not in a position to commit just yet. EG trying to source out some utility, find what else they can take. They, they actually have not heard the alarm bot or the mollies, which is now cooking Jogamo. And that allows Leaf to swing out right there as he was trying to escape. Leaf was able to line up too quite quickly with util on top of that. And once again, EG had to backpedal into the opposite direction. At least for now, though, there's only Valen left. that's playing it very passively to get information first so that G2 could play the numbers on a retake. Nature and Four and Shorty down to 12 HP as he was trying to scale up here towards this A side. And the plan continues to try to finish towards the B side with 10 yep. seconds left on the clock. Probably to scale out. Left. Spotting nobody in, in the sight, and G2 Time is okay of giving this up. Spikes planted. Where are you? So there will be noise and pressure here as the revolving door gets hit on this C site. And again, trying to keep them back at bay. So it'll give a chance for the defenders to swarm back up here, come out from the B heaven side. There's that paranoia initiated. It's going to hit one, but nature is playing the off angle. Almost got that one up to Jonah B. But the trades are great for G2 Whoa. once again. They convert the bonus round to get three on Lotus. Really, really neat. Look at the pings on the minimap right now. It's just going to talk about this. The really, ones, yeah. really neat positioning. Remember, just in the first few rounds, the alarm bot was far outside C, where they could attack it, close. then know they took alarm bot really down, play with a little bit more space. Pushing in that time, they found turret, but not alarm bot, not the mollies. It eventually became their demise once they found out those mollies were ready to cook a little deeper in sight and they have to either blast up towards Waterfall or go all the way around Ben to make that work if this is going to keep changing on that C side. We'll see how they actually position the Alarm Bot this time. It does look like they are again. Maybe going to put it outside. Hasn't even set it down yet. It's actually over towards B. So another change up of where that Alarm Bot's going to be. They put it right here at that B side now. And it's going to be another look towards C here for Evil Geniuses with a little less map control. And this A info is giving G2 so much to start with every time. Well, G EG's already lost Superman towards the seaside too. So as Leaf was jiggling for information towards the mound, I'm not sure he instantly popped one. And yeah, these nano swarms, it's really just to not allow EG to get across here towards water or get heavily damaged until they get to the wooden ramp. Yet nature still gets the opener. Good push. Jonah P answers right back. Three players spamming through the wall from Waterfall just to try to damage. Prevent the spike from getting planted, but it will it will go down. With the last two pushed up towards the spawn is Apoth denied here by Trent. And now you're alone. Not going to work out with the Sheriff. G2 are not really giving EG any chances to not no. only get in the site or set up or even move in as a whole team in there because they're losing a lot of players in the beginning of these rounds for EG side. Yeah, incredible teamwork right now for G2. They got flooded in site, backed up to play more of a retake after they lose leaf excuse me and just continue to take the site back together eg trying to push forward and maybe grab a gun but it was a flood on that defensive spawn side for g2 which did not allow eg's encroachment into that area to work all right guns across the board again four in a row g2's post plants so good right now on all these diffuses yo it's going to be that showstopper up for icy and now they're going to attack c this time it's been quiet from g2's defensive side on this area until now. It's a nice call though, because we're so close to the ultimates, opportunities for EG to swing things in their side by leveraging ultimates on the side of Jogimo and they want to contest it. A as they push it up towards the rubble. Nature gets popped. And once again, you lose that control on one extremity, you have no choice. You have to try to make a move now on the other end. And they know they've been pressured a lot for EG towards Mount at the beginning. And they're ready for B. They have eyes everywhere on the map right now. G2 is so ready. But Jogimo picked up the orb on the C site. So definitely, especially that, Nano Swarms came out preemptive, preemptively. Might give a chance here for Jaw to satchel in. But they've lost Apoth on the lurk. 
There you go towards the sky, lands it on to Leaf, down to 20 HP. Jonah B lines up the two, entering quite easily. And there's the showstopper in retaliation from Icy. And G2 now have five in a row on their map pick. And they're keeping three alive. They're keeping quite a few alive on the these rounds. Good, yeah. So the bank is good. That means they can take the chances. They can go to farm these orbs. They can keep pushing extremities with the, the C play they have where Icy was one of the big factors. They've been able to push A and use that grenade or use the Raisinade to get positioning on Rubble. They're still able to do it with just Trent, just Valen. Hey, they're just vibing right now. EG calling a timeout and this is giving me flashbacks off kickoff, actually, when they were playing on Sunset and G2 had a very one-sided start. And it came down to two early timeout burns from Potter. And then you started seeing EG coming back here in the second half to really battle it back on Sunset. Will it be the same story right now on Lotus? Really, it seems like Christine has figured something out, or at least trying to figure out how they could iron out those fundies of their default play, because they're realizing the heavy pressure that G2 is bringing out on either extremities. Yet last round was both at the same time when EG yeah. had the gun round. We're really close to these ults. So EG is coming up with a new surprise. Uh, should I say G2 coming out with a new surprise this time around too, on how aggressively they want to play on defense. They seem to always have two together, whether, whether there's the rotation now actually back towards Icy and, and Valen over towards A. We just saw that again being Trent and Valen as Icy went C. But it seems like they're just using that buddy system so well. And if Leaf can't control, they back up and make sure everyone's together. See if EG can break that defense. Quick haunt over out of B. They're able to destroy it. And they have to be very wary about this control. They've seen G2 here every single time, and this low buy means they're gonna creep up even slower. Uh oh, so much utility being thrown here towards the gate side. It's countered back by a nightfall that gets information on three. So that's the call for EG to move inside B for a plant. And you know, off these timeouts, EG is not afraid of using these ultimates when they have a lower buy. Look at the four pushes towards the spawn because of that information. We're moving behind enemy lines here for EG, but a rotate comes back from G2 out at the Hobbit. Door. Four players streamlining in, traded out to start things off, but EG takes the lead, at least in the situation. Head to head, out towards the heavens. Derek then answers back onto Valen. It's doable now for Jogging One, Derek of EG against Trent and Jonah P, who does have the pit. Forced to fight out against Jogging One, back towards the waterfall. The tap on the spike, the wall comes up, isolating one of the two players remaining of EG. Hot now being thrown out. Derek marks them both. Only has his share. Lands the first shot, and now it's ticking down on that spike. Derek here's the tap, swings out, oh! and gets it! The Clutch Master is once again back here for Evil Geniuses! Derek with an amazing wait. The patience there. Playing all the mind games necessary to pull the round into EG's favor. It took everything. And it has just about each one of these rounds to put down G2 just this once so far. Five to one after that shot. And we start round seven. Operator in the hands of Jogamo. The timeout for EG paying off big here. Can they get the momentum? Oh, I see. Cold shuts it down. A big start. It's quick on that A site. Even once again, Lurk denied on B. And as that momentum you thought was going to come back from EG from yeah. that drift, he gets instantly stopped by G2's again forward position on the A site rubble. And now with no map control, losing Apoth towards mid as well, they have to regain a little bit of an idea of where EG could be pushed up. You have a great idea. Or I mean, G2, that smoke rather. was thrown towards the seaside. Yeah. And then you have an alarm bot. You'll know for sure if somebody's moving in from mound. Then the Prowler came out towards front B. So nobody is moving from EG, even continuing their focus of three players playing semi-passively towards the A site to try to deny yeah. EG moving up here towards A. And the G2's aggression has been constant, right? Even for the, the save round there, the pressure they got on Rubble, Derek Nightfalls to return the favor and try to get back. I'm sure they'd love to have Nightfall here on this buy round to be met with Trent's. Jonah P's already alted C. G2 are not holding back, and this tree hit's gonna have to work for EG. At least there is a snake bite being dropped here at the drop area. The pressure coming in, Icy 
Gets flooded from the left side by nature. Here comes the attendant of the plant. You heard Valen coming out for the TP from the shadows to support quickly for G2. Coming out towards the drop. Oh. Spraying with the Odin. Superman falls, and once again, EG will have to try to go for a clutch. A two versus four. Snake bite on that spike, denying the first point. Leaf not opting to use his lockdown <laughs> yet. Everybody's just spraying across. Still being quite annoying with these doors. Nature finally gets the pick. A second one there. Nature. Nature. A third! And he gets the ace! What a clutch coming out for Nature! That's two clutches in a row! Tying in with the Night by Power Race! You can't. You can't ask for any more from these players. That is going to snuff the momentum of G2 completely. Sure, they have money to buy here. They're going to be calling a timeout. But the mentality that G2's had over these first few rounds to lose to clutches like that, the ace on this one as well. Nature opened up the site with the first kill. So already a pivotal frag in the round to make sure that A was something that they could work with. But then to ace the round? Like this. God, disgusting. <laughs> disgusting. And now we have a timeout being called by G2. So with this timeout, it gives us a chance to talk about I buy power. I mean, with that ace, you just cut, could follow their socials as they're giving away a free PC using the I buy power races I currently see here on the VCT stage. Yeah. So make sure you check out their socials and uh, have a chance to win a PC. And thank me. Dude, I feel like every time I'm casting these games, we got so many aces. Does I buy power like to work with me or not? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> ever looming uh, the aces will be plentiful here you gotta have the kickback <laughs> gotta have the kickback now from g2 they've got to show us something uh the longer the round goes it seems like eg is able to get a better foothold at least a little closer on the positioning and then make their attack that much stronger because they're at the front door the, the rounds g2 had a hold on the rubble push was coming in from icy they were already getting frags c was on lockdown nobody would even get towards b athos apoth was blocked by the wall but things have changed after that timeout Potter called. And now we're into Come round eight. Out. Not as much push pressure on the extremities here from G2, and that will give EG the room they're looking for. Fast play, little spray, and Jogmo's in. At least there's no alarm bot this time around to do the double damage on these nano storms, so we get through it quite easily, but instantly. Leaf pops down the lockdown, pushing them back. Jogmo <laughs> gets detained, but he's gonna be safe for now. Yeah. Gives a chance now for EG to re-hit if they want to. So the paranoia will slowly set in for G2. Yep. They'll make the first noise for EG, though, by grabbing this orb on the C site. This wall we have every time coming in. You see on the backside, Icy's trying to play that. The wall's been used a few times by nature off the play. So you have to wonder, is somebody pushed up? Are they going to be around a corner? And that's just the kind of added pressure you can get with this Viper wall all the time. Goes up, and they'll have pretty clear movement on Rubble here. Especially then when that initial pressure came out from EG on the C site, they can't really get that A site control that they've been doing so well here for G2. So all five players of EG grouped up. 30 seconds left. Using a smoke towards the staircase. Now making themselves heard. Opening the revolving door and executing towards the A site. It's going to be open for a plan. Although, there there's Util coming in. The oh. satchel's out from IC. Clears out Elise Apop, but gets instantly traded out by nature. Then the frags are coming in left. favor of EG. Plat now planted. in. Out for the tree side. Two players left alive for G2. That's Leaf and Jonah P with barely any utility left. The only thing Leaf has here is Timmy the turret. He wants to use it with the door. Making sure though that he clears out the back of Rubble. Let's see if this wall suits him. <laughs> too many. Too many on Just both too sides. many. Surprise on every single door. Jonah is now alone. And with the money that you see in the bank currently for the rest of G2, of he's definitely going to try to see the weapon. So far being hunted down by nature. Yeah. But no matter what, the round will go to EG. Big smoke up top from Superman, kind of forcing EG to, to fly into the site. Two going drop, too. You would think maybe a few more dropping with Icy there. If he's going to go close and just look for a, a kill right there on the backside of site. But yeah, I also think that G2 didn't expect EG to have that many in sight. They were all looking towards drop spot, ready to defend as G2 did a flood retake. And it just did not count. So EG three in a row now. And it will finally be able to get a little bit under the skin of G2. We see the low armor coming in here. 
He might be buying for rounds to come, too. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Bucky. half buy. Stinger. So they're going to look to have a little bit more in the future. There. Because they're going to try to really get the focus of this orb now for Icy. Being damaged down to a little bit of a sting bite, down to 24 with a spray, too. And the other player is pushing forward. Yes, they'll have a showstopper now, but with low HP, this is still a tough condition for G2. Buying around that rifle that was saved by Jonah P to try to win the round. The wall banks are coming across. There's that paranoia, nature, and Superman working in tandem, dropping Great two fight. players of G2 and forcing those players back. Good control. I, this is one of the rounds EG finally gets to kind of absorb this G2 aggression. They've actually been losing quite a few members at that first rubble fight. And they go back to see. This has been the entry. Jogamo's just feeling comfortable on this hit. I didn't know that Leaf is there with a Bucky. Forced to play a different angle by the waterfall. And EG understands that. So they're going all the way around towards the ramp. We'll take the free site, the free plant. And the biggest damage they could do here is at least there. Icy with his Vandal. Seize Nate combo, but the Seize misses. So we'll not do any damage here to EG on the whole plant. Here comes a swing, finally. They do get the contact onto Derek. A chance now, potentially, if they're able to drop one more and utilize this showstopper. But Leaf just fell. Icy and Trent now, high and low, oh. on the right side of the C site. And it's not looking good at all here. There EG able to Take score now CSP. four rounds in a row in their favor. And we're finally starting to see a game quite early in this first half of Lotus. Incredible that they're instantly able to pull around four in a row because it, it wasn't coming from a lot of the frags in the round. It was the post plants, right? This EG wasn't able to get into those first few fights. The first blood goes towards G2, and then it seems like the round fell apart too much. EG's doing a really nice job of playing a bit more of the map before they, they start to play mine. the site. And that's one heck of a call to be making, especially when you're just 5-0 figure out what the right one would be to grab four back in a row. Icy still with that showstopper now a lot healthier to start this round off, but he's going to meet Jogmos as well. And there could be face to face right here. Showstopper out, counter showstopper on both ends. Who hits who? Wait! At least it's guns instead. Instant trades on both sides. Hat coming out to get information and now it's thrown here by Apoc. Knowing now that the A side is open, but Superman's trailing far behind still. Door closes, time wasted. Valen in the drop spot. Just around the corner is Nature. There's a first phrase now hit oh, by the snake bike. He's fine, managed safe, to safe. find a spot where he's okay. Superman finally trying to go for a plant, but taps first. Trying to see if G2 is going to swing out, and they do. Managed to get a snake bike kill onto Derek. 45 seconds left. Door reopened now by Superman. 8 HP left. Dang. As they're gonna try to pivot towards the B side, TP across, and now Nature cuts the rotation. There's that first and second, but instantly Trent trades it out. The attempts now towards the B side, now down. Throws out a smoke as Superman, now plays inside of it and around. First contact will be Trent, there's that first, and instantly there. Fallon sprays through the smoke to trade it right back. Quick flick there to end it, but yeah, EG again on the verge of taking another one. And, and that call to switch it up, but have the, the clothesline, the cutoff there coming in really big, almost able to capitalize. The, the ults are starting off, not coming up with too much, but gave him the space to want to be able to get into the site, play over towards A to start things off. And these A fights have just been wildly chaotic too. Everybody's dropping into site right away for G2. I don't know if EG can use that to their advantage, but it seems uh, with that and the util they were able to get out that time from G2. This makes it seem very tough, and they get that post plant back in order. C push and A push again, it seems. No, just the deep alarm bot going out again over towards that C side. What will that do right now as it's being posted up? Giving a chance now for EG just to once again farm a free orb, and that's going to be in the hands of Jogimo. Nightfall available and ready if EG wants to use it. Aponth once again trying to find late information. Cage to come up. Here's a shot coming out from front B. But it's a bait shot from Trent here, so now Icy could battle it down head to head. But Aponth knows, uh, knows better than to peek. 
EG still trying to break some util towards the C site. There. They're trying to work off a few of the precedents they've seen G2 make. You know, somebody pushed A a few rounds ago. Mid had a little bit of pressure that Apoth just kind of saw. But G2 is playing pretty safe right now, all things considered, with the way they've shown the past few rounds. EG is going to get that time down to about 30 seconds. Looks like we're going to get a crash on A. Slow movement in towards Rubble. Jog's yeah. pretty far away, so the team's gonna have to do this on their own. It didn't stop nature before. Now a couple of them are gonna get hit here by the Nightfall. Paranoia also comes out here to counter out and hold the push. 20 seconds left on the clock. EG has now moved inside the side. Counter Nightfall out on the defensive side. Numbers are down even. Make that an advantage for EG. Flat now successful. And you mentioned Jonah P being too far. And now he's going to have to try to retake it inside an attacking Viper's Pit. So that now he has to difficult. think on his toes. No util to work with. And he just made some noise. So they know that he dropped down towards the rope. As he walks in, gun first, nature fires first. And EG win the round. Last round Just in the sourcing the map for information and playing off it. Really nicely done. They've had a few rounds EG has starting at C, getting One themselves back in. And these fights over at A just have been their bread and butter to end some of these rounds. Real happy with the way the rest of this one's been going, especially to stave off G2 after they quickly pull back around. That's gonna do a little ditty on G2's money for this one. And they're on a low buy for the last round of the first half. Four on C. Let's see if they play the fake. Do they let somebody go out, play a little aggressive, and then trap EG with the rest of G2's members in the site? Oh no, they're just waiting family photo style. High low here. Quite crazy that uh, Superman is the one running up to tap there. on the orb, seeing there a trap play coming out from G2, but he's doing that with the spike on his back. Finally, there. leaves it behind for Derek. And goes for a second attempt. G2 staying patient. And Jogimo now at the point. Paranoia behind to support. Yeah. Prowler 2 towards the front. Here. Repeat of last round. A little bit less aggression on what the utility of, of C offered, but that's good enough. And the haunt as well, getting so much information. Now Valen alone has a vandal at least. Spraying back into smoke are both teams. It looks like EG decides to pull back. Oh. Towards the C side of 1v1, nice little snake bite. <laughs> Flushing out Leaf. So unfortunately he falls. And he gives the whole site open now for EG. A TP out from Valen, left. but it's a one versus four. Stopped right away. No plant needed as we tie up the game 6-6 six, six on a half. In that last round, you see Nature just Switching mollying sides. out one player, right? Finding out where they could kill Leaf. Other kills on the other side. Just Find dissecting you. where G2 is hiding. That's what EG was doing that map to bring back six. Absolutely figuring out how G2 was, G2 was defending. Left. And we got, a, we got a game on our hands. Now. Oh, yeah. And definitely we're seeing... EG playing a lot more slowly. Just want to make sure the aggression's not there, but at least they get it. But before we start the second half, let's hear from G2's IGL Valen and get his thoughts on bringing Icy into the roster. Yeah, so the biggest reason why we ended up picking up Icy is because he's very fundamentally sound within the game and he kind of understands already like how tier one teams play or how we kind of envision the game. So bringing him in was really easy. And in terms of his mechanical power, like he's insane. So I'm, I'm, even I'm excited for you guys to realize, like, yo, this new kid on the block is gonna be something special. If he's disciplined within his practice and it really just kind of tries to mimic his play, like, in other words, don't be a scrimmer, right? Like I've been telling him, like, hey, like, make sure when you're practicing with us, like, really try to understand why we're playing this way, what your goal is or your job in the situation. So he's gonna make it really easy for himself doing that and in turn when he goes out and performs on stage like it'll be like a cakewalk for him so i think you guys will be surprised and so far like so that. good right yeah talking about icy at this point and his performances on lotus with you know being the new kid on the block and doing his role he's done that exactly pain shells coming out creating space allowing his teammates to move forward not being selfish to try to run down first and try to get the pick. Yeah, yeah. That's the type of play style that G2 is currently looking at, trying to deny EG in these four positions in the beginning. 
It's a good balance of what if I and the team would want me to, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> what if I did and no, they probably, you know, they'd want me to do this. And it seems like if he can keep those fundamentals going, it's it's been working for G2 here. Being able to entry pretty fearlessly on the other side to get the sights back in the post plants, which worked out heavily the first half for G2. But then it was just that late round attack. EG completely working the map, pulling all the strings that they could on G2 before they finally decided. Nature popping off too with a few rounds. Derek with a huge, or I'm sorry, not Derek. Uh, oh, no, it was Derek. To pull off that huge uh, yeah, sheriff round. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. Start, it off, start everything off after the timeout, so. For sure. It definitely took a bit, but EG found that power. And now we got the even game. I was wondering if the wall dropped for a second. Nobody even, <laughs> nobody even moved. They're just looking for the haunt to come over before they move out here. Even jump spotting yeah. was Trent to see if EG is going to play the wall contact on their end. And an early defender wall comes up. And that's going to keep G2 behind theirs. As Trent pulls his up too. Haunt late. to try to get info. He gets shot right away. But for EG, it's potentially, okay, maybe still just the lurker. They don't have too much going on on the seaside. Yet EG still wants to gamble. The instant rotate out from the seaside. Jogimo looking to move in here with the rest of the players towards A. And Apoth could not have his utility stretched out further on this one. Trying to cover just about every site with a little bit. Is it going to be enough? Scoring first is Apoth, though. EG in the lead in a situation. Close to the traps. Also, a little high to go against the Satchels, but the Satchels will be denied by Apoth once again with the Classic. G2 finally able to come back for trades. And also taking lead in this situation. Jogno wrapping around. As the Haunt oh. misses him, he has a timing across. Leaf is low on HP, so is Trent. Now the jump spot. Do we left. see him here? Here's the reload! And it's enough here to bait Jogimo out and Trent to get the kill. And G2 win another pistol. It took a bit. They got close to that wire and I think instantly, collectively said everybody left side A. Because that was a very fast switch from G2 to only hit rope side. You saw a few people go and then they all said, nope, we're crashing. Yeah, Three coming out of stairs left. too was a big reason they wanted that left side. Nicely done. Bulldogs out here for G2. Making sure they can put down EG no matter what the buy could be. Yeah. Similar to that second round. BB door also broken instantly for Jogimo. So we're looking for fast rotates on their side. And quite oh. interestingly enough, a lot of util being thrown from EG side. I like that. Sacrifice your life, deny the orb. And also making sure that it's not going to be potentially like icy trying to pick it up. Did he get it? Two for nature? <laughs> Yeah, at least that helps him on his right. side, too, for a Viper to get two orbs right away for an early pit. A little rubble control here for EG, and G2 should be able to suss this out pretty easily. And Superman, I think, heard a quick footstep there. He starts to back up and get into position near door. So re-clear here on A. G2 is just trying to not make any mistakes, keep every weapon in. Get all the alt orbs on their side if they can. It looks like it's going to end up being an A hit here if they don't actually decide to get this baby door double kill. When you look at towards the A side, the orb was also denied yeah. of that end here by Superman. And there's IT looking Ooh. to form a bit, but gets denied. But Whoa. once again, both Superman and Derek working in together from baby door to get the kill with the classic. Pain Shell doesn't do too much damage, and we have a safe plant for G2, and even safer positioning on the Pulse plant until this Lurk from Leaf also gets stopped by Epoth, who gets a Stinger upgrade. Two of them now. This could be problems if they get those Stingers together. And they're all around this A site. Yes, Jogimo is there alone on the top of Heaven, but he's only got a Classic, so it gives a chance now to create the space for these two Woo. to come back towards three. Nice ADSing by Valen to get those picks, even a third in the round. And Trent will finalize the last one. Another pistol round converted into a dub for G2, but all armor damage, three parts yeah. lost in the process and against a full classic that EG had. If you think of the way that G2 started that, five alive, they were moving slow, trying to protect each other. And yeah, it got scrappy at the end there. They would have loved to avoid those frags, but it is going to still be a good win. And the bonus now for EG. Valen just clapping with the Bulldog. Remaining. If anything, it was nice, too, that They're Trent threw that haunt to get them. that ping on to nature to get that kill. And yeah, the first opener. When you're trying to deny that or, uh, opportunity to get an ult out earlier out from Icy, it's actually Trent that got closer now to his nightfall. 
and they'll go for it for again. Continuous pressure here every round so far from Evil Geniuses. Superman takes control of the position. A little bit of help there from Jogamo. And then Jog and the rest of the team can make better informed decisions on the map. We saw already Superman able to get out of this once. Yeah. So not a problem for him to be pushed up and get the info. And the good thing is that support system on the A side, no util was being used by Ja or Derek. Mm -hmm. So Superman actually is able to make it safely on top of Rubble. He could try to delay, get info, and will still have util for EG to retake the A site should they lose it here. On this attempt of a push from G2, with another one-way smoke <laughs> being thrown by Superman, they decide to stop. Heck of a delay. They have no idea who else is out there, and, and at the rate Superman is defending it, it's like he's the king to key can defend it with somebody else, and they have to respect that. Just really putting up a good front there, a facade on rubble. And they may have to force towards B. 30 seconds left. This could be a door play, but they're going to be running into that Cypher youth hill. And you might have a Seize need set up here. Seize gets thrown first. There's there an it is. So a little bit of a mistiming there, but it does a little bit of damage. Jogging Mill's the one that's heavily damaged through sprays on the retaliation. And G2 rotating out towards the C site now. Apoth. Avoiding his own seize nade, stays alive for a bit, spamming through his own cage. Jogging around the corner, beautiful hot coming out from Derek. That lines up two kills for nature to throw out the hat. Hit for the last two, and there's no time left. The last two players of G2 are forced to fall back and save their weapons as EG is able to get their gun round. What a round from Evil Geniuses. That the Just to summarize that round was basically, G2, we want you to do this. They were directed away from A, they were directed away from B from the C's nade, right into the waiting arms of Cypher Util at B, the Haunts, the Util, the Dump, and EG just slaughtered G2 on the entry. That was so organized from Evil Geniuses. Nine shots by nature to follow those kills after the ping, and he's dropping 20 now in this server for EG. A slower start that he had the first time mm -hmm. he played against G2 on breach rolls, on KO rolls, but on this Viper today on Lotus. He's definitely come out to play. And EG get the same defensive setup almost every time for free. Instantly Superman's up, Race grabbing info. Here. It's the C hit though. G2's focus is only forward on this one, it seems with Nightfall hitting and I see in. They put a snake by towards the waterfall, somehow gets a second one. As Lee finally is able to answer back, but that support was Spike already down, there from nature. See. Advantage still out for EG. As Valen has made it through the spawn, and he's gonna try to get behind. The winning factor. While Leaf goes for the plat here at the default spot, sees Nate, nice little bait out. Also trying to win some time for Valen to execute this backstab. It works against Superman. They try to answer right back, but Derek is able to avenge his teammate. Back to a 1v1. Jogimo against Leaf. 54 62 are the HPs. Has a turret to work with. So makes it a two versus one in terms of information and angles that could be watched here against Jogimo. Jogimo breaks it right away. Gleams down the four K in a round four Leaf. As one more shot coming out of Jogimo could have been the win. But it's a strong hold for G2 in the end without a plant needed. Sentinels usually doing their work under the radar, especially a Killjoy, but Leaf put in the situation, still stepping up when he's needed. Yeah. Doesn't matter if it's the KJ or not. Valen so close to making that one work, but EG was still ready. They took so much time in Waterfall to say, wait, we've only identified one. They're, okay, it has to be a Lurk. It's been too long. They're not planting, they're not protecting each other. So good mind games there. GB mentioned Leaf in his role have been forced sometimes to play the LMS, right? The last man standing. Exactly. What exactly. are the question marks there? It's been answered. Could still fulfill the role, could still clutch now, could still give a chance for G2 yeah. to maintain their lead now, but that five round lead that they had at the beginning of the game narrowed down by two. As in the later halves of the halves, it definitely starts. EG snowball of a couple of rounds here once they figure out how G2 plays. And it starts off with an outlaw by Superman. Contacts onto Icy. Heavily pressured, another paranoia being thrown out, forcing Valen to TP away. And the G2 Leaf able to get that lurk. God, they're so ready for every push. For EG indeed. Except not for the rotate potentially towards the seaside. So Jogmo wants to try to get the contact, but bumps the ceiling. And now Valens on the lure, but gets stopped. Trying to pinch across, trying to get trades. They lost a spike in the process. And they lost all of their fights for G2. 
Again, they uh, G2 cannot uproot EG from their defensive positions. They get this play at A. Superman was mostly there by himself with an outlaw. But again, G2 assumed there's way more behind it, right? They also this shot and then peeking again. It's just like the audacity of it is kind of blowing G2 away. They're like, okay, we got to back up. There's way more here. It has to be it. Otherwise, you'd think you'd just smother this guy on rubble every round. They go towards mid. There's going to be a crash on to be here. That Cypher Util spread out pretty thin towards sites, and it's going to stop him for the, the hit. But the low buy entry, it looks like the train is on the tracks. Not much is going to stop this one. Except these mullies and balls. And smokes up from EG. Okay, they ran out of coal. <laughs> <laughs> ran I thought we were still getting the blast packs. Ran out of steam. Now you have Stingers with no armor as well for Leaf and Valid. Bucky full shields for Icy. So your call is still right though. They still want to potentially leverage these two satchels for G2 to create some space and close the gap and potentially get a big opener. Might be choosing towards the seaside, especially now that the Nanoswarm has broken the trips away yep. from Apoth. Nice hit there. I think popped cam as well, so they can't use. Caught looking. That's exactly run. what they need. Exactly. And off that kill, a lockdown becomes available. And even better for G2, that's going to create the space for a clean plant. And with the guns that they have, they can close the gap and play up towards the spawn with these lower buys. There. Oh, nice. Given a spike to Icy, a plant coming down has a showstopper in the ready as well. With their showstopper, they should be able to defend this. Well, AG's doing the same thing as G2 right now, being annoying with these revolving doors, so Nature's the one that's opening it up. Three outside sight, they gotta get in. Spike's planted in sight. But I see pops out the showstopper, adding fear to EG, forcing out the rocket, avoiding it, then trying to push down to punish, but Icy stays alive. Now at the top of the boxes as EG, Derek is moving forward with the rest of the team. Out for the oh, kill! Oh. And with the drop! From the top rope! <laughs> G2 gets the round of the Thrifty. <laughs> you just saw him for a moment on the screen. That's how wild these fights are getting. Oh my gosh. For the low by round, be the one that G2 is able to snap back with here again. The classic kill there, the flood into sight. G2 skirt back in from mound just in time. They didn't plant to be able to shoot on stairs and mound. They planted deep in sight, so it was required for everybody to crash back in. Did it at just the right time, and Valen able to swing a haymaker at the end there, as you said. Oh my word. Time out now for Evil Geniuses. Can I get a moment? Get these alts in order. How can they best be used? How can we best defend or retake if that's going to be the case? Man, this back and forth has been wild for the economy in the game too. You see how anybody has, or everybody has hardly any credits in the pocket. It just makes it so tough when you're trying to stretch out these last few rounds and make it to 13. Another important timeout coming out from Coach Potter. Discussing here again, you talked about how going back and forth, but that thrifty that was just won by G2 hurts the economy a bit of EG going into round number 19 here. Which then again, you'll see it once we get into game. There was a couple of rifles being bought, but they're all buying down now to something more affordable yeah. to play a later round, a later game in terms of rifles. But once again, potentially utilizing rather these ultimates around these stingers. Hit towards A. Ooh, finally getting a little first aggro out. Yeah, G2 wants the space right away. Superman will not be able to reside here. They're going to be at C, though. So it's that full retake. They do have the, the nightfall for this, which is why we're seeing such a change on the side of EG. Site's going to be G2's. They should be able to get a little bit of forward push here, too, if they go towards stairs or A link. But being smoked off, that might be too sketchy. Contain the spawn for EG. The trip still towards the B side to give him a chance to have information on a yeah. late lurk, which is not currently available here for G2. So they're going to try to work as a group, winning the first wave of util, potentially trying to flood back now and activate any trades. There's that nightfall for info, a swing out from the orb, but it's G2 answering first. Two on the board for them against one of EG. Vandal upgrade out for Jogimo, though, as they're trying to fight towards the tree, and he swings in alone. All of the plays are G2 winning at the revolving door. And that thrifty this time around. 
will not come in favor of EG after Potter's timeout. Such an awesome shot from the POV of the players in the nightfall there. You can't hear anything. It's chaos. You're shooting based on anything you can identify that breaks that wall, that line of sight. And they all just stay and trade with each other. Very nicely done. One enemy remaining. And a faster strat here from G2. Seeing the call from the timeout. They say, all right, we're going to play something fast. They go towards A, and they did not stop on that. They're going to have Jonah P's ult after that. He'll need one ult orb at the end of the round. Rinse and repeat. We'll get the same strat. A little bit more of alert from Leaf on this one, though. Oh. Going out for a TP right after the paranoia. Avoids a little bit of these bullets. And now with a beautiful haunt being thrown by Derek. Allowing Jogamo and Superman okay. to just shut down the initial push of EG outside of A. But Jonah P is still One up and alive. Remaining. So is Leaf to answer right back. They're given all the fights. They thought there's maybe enough damage done. A little antsy there. And G2 come out on top. Apoth, healthy. Still, though, low armor on this buy. And it's going to be the slow work from G2 as they clear everything. They know Apoth could be one with a wild lurk, that spot you're not expecting. So they ha they're using everything just to get a bit of ground here or make sure they can displace Apoth and find out where he is immediately. And he's jiggling and watching. Yeah. Nana Storm being thrown. He knows there's at least a KJ. And there's that first one at 5 Spike HP left, though. A. Again, still has an idea, especially with the revolving door being hit on the A site. That Leaf was there with his teammate. 30 seconds left. Now off the plant, Apoth does have a cage to work with Five if he wants planted. to block vision and try to move down. Oh, but his signs to move down silently. That turret could be his demise. And he's he's, not gonna he's on the good him. side. He's looking away he's here. He's good. He's trying to get behind. As he's lurking up right now, the turret... It's not even looking towards tree. Oh my gosh. And that... The gun is not even sticking out here. That was so close as Leaf walks behind, but he looks the wrong way. <laughs> Leaf will still get the round and put G2 at that point. LMS still got it. Leaf comes up again with a very big round. That would have been 1,900. Like I said, practically nobody had money in the bank that round. Valen had maybe 3K, everybody else on 700, so... On 1900, that's not going to get you much. They keep the cash, they keep the cash flow, the momentum. And Leaf keeps clutching. What a runaround. A little game of cat and mouse at the end there. And now game point for G2. And this battle to start off on Lotus here. The Omen alts are up. If they can get on the site, Jonah P can quickly put the Viper's Pit down. And it's just, again, G2 a little slower. But we get the same strat. You have your Lurk by Leaf and A control as they move up ever so slowly. And EG wants to play the distance. They only have Guardians really to work with. Four of them. One Bulldog for Apoc. Trying to close there. down. Tight line of sights. Shot a little bit too early on that haunt, so it does get a bit of info. It's, it's, it's gotten thrown out by Derek. Which also pivots, dropping him out towards the A site to try to support Superman. He gets hit by a Paranoia, forced to fall back. Counter flashes, and repositions with Jogamo. Good find. Clearing a lot of info. Oh, Superman though. Now we commit. Nightfall on the attack. Jogamo at half health as he's hit by that even the Han, and that's gonna make it a little bit easier until I see that. Jogamo gets the pick, but there you go. G2 stops the opportunity of EG to turn around over in their favor. Two more kills needed to close out the first map. Welcome Nature and Apoth hit even out on the attack. Rendering things a lot more difficult now for evil geniuses. They hear the drop, the wall comes down, Nature connects onto Leaf. Upgrades now into a Vandal. Both players on both teams virtually at the same health. Apoth trying to walk in, decayed now by the pit, avoids the first snake bite. Sprays across to try to get a timing as he swings in. There's that first kill. A second one easily done by Trent. Four in the round to put G2 with the first map under their belt. It took some crazy rounds across these teams as well to make sure they were able to get the dubs. EG started off with a huge frag from Derek going down to a 1v1. Then we had the ace from uh, ace from Leaf, or not Leaf, Nature. Then we have Leaf clutching, like both teams were bringing it all out here on Lotus to start. But G2 able to get a little bit more momentum as they make their way into that second half. 
and figure out what EG were trying to do. Once they finally got that A control, G2s from their attacking side and they pushed Rubble back, it seemed like they were a lot more comfortable to continue the round. Superman was just able to give up way, way too much info otherwise if they didn't have that area. A great start for G2 as they didn't let their lead slip here in the first map. We'll see if EG can fight back on the second one. Their map pick on Icebox happening after the break. Excuse me, would you mind taking a picture of us? Oh, no problem. Thanks. Ooh. Yes, problem. You need Verizon. Trade in that old thing and get a new iPhone 15 Pro with tons of storage, so you can take all the pics. So many selfies. A preposterous amount of panos! That means panoramic. And as many portraits of me as your heart desires. How about none? None. None, yeah, none feels right. Trade in any iPhone in any condition and get iPhone 15 Pro on us. Only on Verizon. Red Bull gives you wings.